Okay, now we're on to the next uh, entry in the 1991 ranking series. We're ranking the greatest films of uh, the year from the year 1991. And next on the list is Mannequin 2, On the Move, which is truly one of the greatest sequels of all time. And I'm being completely serious of that. It's a, it's a, it's a joy to watch over and over again. It's one of my favorites. Uh, granted, I definitely have a bit of the nostalgia bug for this one, but uh, re upon rewatches, I think it's a hilarious movie. It's just got a lot of charm. It is through and through a Stuart Raphael film. If you've seen his other movies, uh, especially like a Tammy and the T-Rex, you get his sense of humor. You get his zaniness. Uh, there are fam uh, familiar faces in uh, in this one. If you saw um, that uh, in Tammy and the T-Rex, Terry Kaiser plays the villain. He plays the villain here. In my opinion, a way better villain. You know, with the hairy, hairy mole, uh, the the wizard from uh, uh, from uh, back in the Middle Ages. Uh, this movie takes the uh, conceit, the concept of um, uh, from Mannequin, the Kim Cattrall and uh, Andrew McCarthy movie, and basically, I think she was uh, Egyptian. She was like an Egyptian princess of some kind. It's been a while since I saw that one, but because actually, I I don't see that one a lot. I just usually skip right to this one, but. Uh, She's like an Egyptian prince, princess or a mummy or something like that. And she has like a, you know, she has something, there's something magical going on there. I think she wears something, I can't remember. But basically she comes back to life. And there's a little bit of that uh, time travel aspect. There's more of that in here because the villain uh, from the Middle Ages who turns Christy Swanson into a mannequin via this necklace she's wearing... Uh, is a he's a wizard he's like a Merlin type and he uh, due to his magical powers stays alive for hundreds of years and he is the uh, antagonist in this film and this movie a lot of the humor it's fish out of water uh, story which mannequin has that but this has that way more because she's just interacting with the world of the early 90s and like, ooh, ha, you know, it just like, what is this strange and fantastic world I find myself in? She's driving around in tiny Barbie cars and wearing early 90s garbs and she's just having a ball, but also just, and she's just very, very uh, bright and uplifting and po real positive attitude and she doesn't know what's going on. Uh, it's very, very Disney princess and this movie kind of is like a, in a lot of ways like a live action Disney princess movie. And, uh, you know, that would be her. And then you got the prince who um, is a dual role. He mostly plays the future version of this guy who's the prince. And then in the future, his name, I think, I believe his name is Jason. And he just works at a department store and he uh, encounters this mannequin. You know, this is very similar, very similar to the first mannequin. Again, this movie is superior in every way. That's William Ragsdale, by the way. He was the antagonist, uh, Charlie Brewster, in um, the original Fright Night and Fright Night Part 2. Um, I saw that movie again recently. Um, you know, that's a classic. William Rag Ragsdale is also in Justified. I just started watching Justified for the first time. And I didn't. I was like, whoa, Ray William Ragsdale. I mean, obviously he's much older now, but uh, I, was like, I was very pleasantly surprised to see him, that he's still working. He's great in this. I actually like him better in this than I do in Fright Night. I feel like Fright Night, he's, you know, he was younger and just starting out. I think I, he gets better as and more seasoned as he as he goes on as an actor, like most uh, performers do. There's also uh, the return of Hollywood, the character of Hollywood from the first film. That's actually the only thing that connects these two movies is um, Mihash, I think it was Mihash Taylor. I believe that's his name. He's a he's a hilarious actor, and his um, over the top, you know, exuberant character of Hollywood, the um, you know fashion fashionista, fashion designer, uh, is uh, hilarious, and and works as a great um, bit of um, comic relief in the first movie. But in this movie, there's so much comic relief. There's Terry Kaiser as the villain. There's his two muscle bound goons. Who are uh, they? They talk like Arnold, and they just—that's a little bit of fish out of water too. And they're and they're portrayed as kind of dumb. They're basically Hans and Franz, from you know SNL type of stuff. And and they're and they and they wear the you know it just <laughs> so 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 you got the dumb humor from them. You got uh, the the dynamic that they have with the boss who is just so frustrated and can't find that he can't find better help. Yet he, these are his goons, and uh, he's hilarious and over the top, and he's got the hairy mole. 
and he's very his his performance. I mean, Terry Terry Kaiser talk about an underrated performer. Between this and him playing a corpse in Weekend at Bernie's, which to this day is referenced, like when you think of corpse acting, you think of Bernie from Weekend at Bernie's. That guy is amazing. But in this movie, if you really want to see him do the opposite of playing a corpse. He is very, very loud, and he's very, very colorful and very interesting in this movie. And then you have Christy Swanson, who gives a, a brilliant uh, comic performance with her fish out of water stuff. And William Ragsdale as the as the straight man, as the as the who's caught in the middle of all this. But he's he's like, I like him better than Andrew McCarthy in the first one. So this movie is one of those examples where I feel I feel it's superior. In every way, I think there was a famous song from the first movie, so you can make the argument that that is better in that movie, maybe. But I think this movie has a famous song. I I can't think of the names of the songs right now, but um, this movie, for the most part, is it does everything that a sequel should do. It's bigger, it's better, it's louder, it's prouder, and uh, it is a a joy like a real joy it's one of those things where you just put on it puts a smile on your face and you have a good time um i love it so um i'm gonna actually call this and this is my ranking list so it's gonna look like my ranking list i'm gonna call this a classic because i i believe it is there you go thank you very much Stole to the party with the wrong face in space. No one hears a scream like a primate. First dates. Can they